So I'm Pratim, I'm a solutions architect for uh, Amazon Web Services, been in the company for about a year. I was a customer for AWS for three years before that. Uh, so I specialize in big data analytics, and today we'll talk about um, analyzing genomic data set with Amazon Athena. What I want to quickly do is uh, take a step back and look at a quick introduction of healthcare on AWS. Uh, what we're doing, what we're doing with different partners, with customers, and we'll jump straight into uh, genomics analysis on AWS. And hopefully, if everything works, uh, we're going to do a live demo of uh, Amazon Athena, uh, which is our serverless Hadoop platform. Um, and uh, then we do uh, Q and A. Um, and then, so big data decisions in healthcare. So as we know, we've got growing populations, lots of patients, um, you know, pressure on social media, social and human services, um, and the need to effectively manage the benefits programs, right? So such research as genomics, et cetera, are really, really useful uh, because they generate insights that will identify utilization trends, find where uh, there are redundancy, uh, quality metrics, and it'll hopefully shape our um, uh, shape the future the way we uh, use healthcare resources. Um, so just a, just a quick look at the ecosystem um, of established healthcare partners and the new entrants in this. Um, so quick look at it. We have uh, Siemens who have uh, developed a healthcare application that makes it easier for doctors um, and provide personalized care to the patients. Uh, we have Bristol Myers Squibb uh, who are running clinical simulations, uh, clinical trial simulation on AWS. Um, we have Johnson & Johnson who have moved over 120 applications on AWS and also they run in a hybrid mode, which they like to call it the high, uh, borderless uh, architecture. Um, so yeah, so there's a lo lo lots of people using AWS in a very uh, creative way uh, for healthcare. Uh, this is a, this. I just want to code this. Uh, found it quite powerful. Having the CEO of Healthcare Informatics Solution from Philips saying, "We combine data to make it actionable. We are doing that together with Amazon because there is only one company that we can do this with, which gives us reliability, scale, and performance we need." A uh, few other few other people uh, who are. Uh, so rather than looking at the whole uh, healthcare and AWS, I'm trying to specialize a uh, focus today more on the big data analytics side of healthcare and how genomic, genomics relates to it. So Pfizer runs some large scale um, data analytics, uh, research products, clinical analysis and modeling on AWS. Uh, we've got Seven Bridges, which does uh, uh, genomic analysis that analyzes DNA sequencing on AWS. Um, <coughs> so, we're going to start now. So that, that's a quick background. Now, back to the topic, we'll do some uh, genomics analysis. So if you look at uh, what's in the background, uh, that, that was not my two-year-old daughter thinking my keyboard was a, um, you know, her piano. Uh, is, 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 there, is all life in art is kind of a result of these sequences. So we like to call these um, base pairs. Um, so when you put them in specific order, they may contain instructions that kick off processes that eventually form all characteristics and traits of everyone else and everyone in the nature. Um, so questions like which species does this come from? Um, which function does it solve? So we're going to do a quick refresher. I have to do it myself. Um, so biology 101. Um, so those were base pairs. So let's, let's look at the basic unit of life, apart from the virus, is called the cell, right? And genetic information is encoded by the DNA, um, so, and then it's put in specific order and transcribed into an RNA. So let's look at it in the computing world a little bit and say the DNA is a bipod, right? Which produces the assembly language. And let's assume the cell is the processor. So now we've got a bit of code out here. So let's put an architecture diagram together. So the DNA gives replication instructions. Step one. Step two, 
a portion of the DNA sequence is converted into an RNA. And then RNA converts into a messenger RNA, which converts into a protein. And proteins is assigned a role. So it's almost like um, roles, like you see, I put an IM, if you, if you recognize the AWS uh, icons over the IM roles. So it's like almost thinking like it's, it's a, let's assume it's a car. So when you're driving a car, you have a few roads, right? So uh, you say the catalytic, uh, the cat catalytic, where you're saying gas down, I need to go faster. Uh, in, the, in the case of uh, the genomics, it's saying we need to produce more cells. Um, regulatory saying, no, that's, we've got enough cells already. And it's saying structural, all right, this is my destination, so this is what I'm going to make for the cells. So, what happens is uh, we have a reference uh, sequence uh, which we get from that genomics project. And there are little variations. Everyone in this room, every one of the <coughs> audience has got you know, 2.5 billion of this. Um, and if you extend that beyond this room um, to the rest of the human species, and then if we want to really run analytics with other species and see what differences are there, um, there you go, that's a big data problem. Yeah, it's not, not just a click stream or a financial transaction analysis, this is a big data <coughs> problem of the, that nature gives us. So what, what solutions do we have in AWS to address the solutions? We really don't have one solution. We don't have one service that can solve. We need, we need services that can analyze data in any format, and we need services that can scale as much as you need and very low cost. So I want to quickly run through um, our big data analytics platform. So, on the left, we have a series of services that's available for you to collect data, so Direct Connect, uh, we recently got some of the AWS Snowmobile, uh, Import Export, IoT, we talked about yesterday a lot, uh, Kinesis for stream processing, and moving databases from um, um, various uh, heterogeneous data sources to AWS called AWS Database Migration Services. Uh, we can orchestrate the process of moving data um, and also ETLing uh, using uh, some of the services in the middle, such as AWS Data Pipeline, SWF, AWS Batch, and AWS Glue, um, which is coming. And then we store the data. Uh, uh, we can store the data on S3. S3 is a object storage, a web scale object storage. Uh, you can grow as much as you need, uh, very, very inexpensive. Uh, and then you can archive data into Glacier. But no SQL database, we've got DynamoDB. Um, and uh, on, on the analysis side, we've got uh, EMR, which is a managed to do cluster. Uh, you can use Redshift. A lot of genomics works actually run on um, um, health information systems, for example, run um, uh, their, uh, a lot of analysis with R on Redshift. Uh, we have some machine learning, kinesis analytics, and also we've got a sort of visualization uh, layer called Amazon QuickSight. And then uh, Amazon Athena, uh, which is a serverless big, big data platform. So we're going to focus on S3 and EMR. Uh, S3 to store the data today in the demo, and um, EMR to crunch the data. So massage the data, cleans the data, um, and finally, uh, run some queries using uh, Amazon Athena. What's S3? What's S3? Sorry, apologies. Uh, it's simple storage service. It's an object storage last uh, case. So, um, you know, you can store, you know, S3 scale individual files, maybe 1K to 5 terabyte, and you can have as much as you want, many of those. Some customers want to appendabize work of uh, S3 storage. Uh, data science of, uh, on AWS, which is very important to a researcher, especially if you're doing uh, genomics work. Um, we provide a variety of uh, open source um, uh, data analytics, uh, data science platforms on AWS. So EMR, um, just with a few clicks, uh, our managed Hadoop cluster, so Elastic MapReduce, EMR stands for, uh, thanks. 
And uh, so when you click off with a few checkboxes, you can say, I want to run uh, EMR version 5, for example, with Hive, uh, Zeppelin, which is again a notebook solution with UK. So it really not much coding you've got. You can just, uh, you know, with a few clicks, install and uh, run all those on, the, on top of EMR. Um, or also you can run uh, other notebook services like uh, Jupyter. Um, AWS service, big data service also plugs in quite nicely with some um, commercial software such as SAS, Tablet, um, and obviously SQL. You know, was probably the most popular language, SQL. Everyone knows how to run, so SQL runs um, very well on AWS. Uh, uh, I managed to do it using Spark or Presto. Spark SQL or Presto. <coughs> so that, that's a kind of array of stuff. So I want to go through what we have in order for you to solve uh, large-scale challenges such as genomics. Um, so today we're going to focus a little bit on Spark, um, which came out of uh, Berkeley and is now a <coughs> uh, project, um, hugely popular in data science. Um, so, and it's very easy to run Spark on AWS. Mainly, a few reasons. Uh, in the previous slide, we showed with a few clicks, you can decide to have a Spark cluster on the AMR. So it's easy to install and configure, uh, quickly add um, and remove capacity. Uh, Spark submit, you can send Spark jobs on uh, EMR using Spark submit uh, to the command line, or you can use the Zeppelin uh, notebook service. Uh, if you like to use Python, for example, you can use PySpark. Um, and then, which is, I'm going to go to some customer examples later on, but some customers, especially in the genomic space, love to use Amazon EC2. So you can bid for how much you want to spend on, on our uh, managed new cluster. <coughs> so uh, you can get up to 90% of the uh, on, on demand pricing um, on, on, on running to do. Uh, it's secure, and we can use, and you can use S3 to decouple compute and storage. This is extremely powerful. Why is it powerful? So when you are not Computing, the data can sit. You don't have to pay for computing. You do not have to launch EMR cluster. So, you know, the weekends, for example, if, if you're running some workload, if you're not running some workload, shut down your cluster. Well, your data stays on S3. Good morning, come back on Monday, spin up your EMR cluster, and, you know, it points to S3. That's a great <coughs> advantage of separating compute um, from storage. Right, and uh, for for today's demo, I'm going to use a library called Adam, uh, which is uh, specifically geared towards genomics. Came from Amp Labs, uh, Berkeley. Um, so, what is Adam? Adam is a genomics analysis platform with specialized file file format. Uh, is built using Apache Avro, which is a data format, and and, and Parquet and uh, Spark, which we talked slightly, uh, is an open source project. It's available on GitHub. Feel free to uh, try it out. And it integrates very easily with AWS through uh, EMR and Spot. Um, some basic requirements in uh, running um, to in running um, Adam on AWS. So you launch launch your EMR cluster, uh, SSH to the uh, um, to the uh, master node, um, and then install Adam over there. And uh, um, you need to build Adam because it's source code, so you use Maven to build it. So step, step at a time, uh, you get the repository, um, and then uh, install Maven, and then you know, clone, uh, git clone, um, Adam there, uh, Adam there, and <coughs> then just build it. So for those of you familiar with Linux, it's some you know, very, very basic standard steps to uh, get uh, Adam running, and once Adam is running, you get this prompt, um, or a very nice ASCII prompt, uh, which you don't see these days anymore in other places, but uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, Adam is ready to, uh, to, to work for you. Um, so process VCF files from 100 genomes projects, so v, uh, v, v, VCF files, so, um, variable cell format files, so this is how uh, the all the thousand genomics project data we host on AWS uh, S3 for free and we make it publicly available as part of our public data set program for you to do lots of research. 
so that's available. You can you can just get it there and start uh, get those files and do uh, whatever analysis you want to do. Uh, so one of the steps we do with Adam Submit, we convert the VCF files uh, to a format uh, which Spark likes to work on, which is Park A. Um, and once it's converted to Park A, uh, you have various options. You can go back to Zeppelin, which is your nice uh, web-based uh, notebook where you can run uh, either Spark SQL or Scala. If that's your language of choice, a lot of data centers prefer these days. Um, or even from the command line on the SSH uh, terminal that you're logged into the master node, you can run um, commands like a uh, very simple uh, give a variable and say read, read my file, um, and you can understand the schema, the calling print schema, register the temp table, register the hive table underneath, and you can st straight away start, start running uh, queries. Um, so, the, so let's, let's quickly go to the data set a little bit more. The genomics industry is in the midst of a data explosion because of the drop in prices to sequence uh, genomes. Uh, genomics is not central to medical advances, you all know that. When your genome is sequenced and analyzed, raw sequencing files are processed in a multi-step workflow to identify where your genome differs from a standard reference. So we have a standard reference. Go through, um, and then you find the differences with whatever your subject is. Um, your variations are stored in a variation call form of VCF, which you mentioned, uh, which is then combined with other individuals to enable population scale analysis. Many of these data sets are publicly available, the Open Data Project, which you mentioned quickly. Um, so, questions a, a, a genomic scientist might have. What variations in a genome may cause the risk of developing a particular disease? Or what position in the genome has an abnormal level of variation suggesting that the data quality has not been met? Something is wrong there. Uh, what variations in the genome influence how an individual responds to a particular drug uh, or, or a race uh, responds to a particular drug? And does a group of individuals contain a higher frequency of genomic variant uh, known to alter response to a drug relative to a general population? So all of this work on, on genetic uh, genomic uh, analysis can be uh, called, referred to a paradigm called a select, aggregate, annotate. And some of our genomics customers, such as Human Longevity Inc., routinely uses the, this pattern in their work. So, quickly look at uh, what, what I meant by the select, aggregate, annotate uh, paradigm. So select, specify a cohort of individuals, so you select them, um, meeting a certain criteria. So it could be based on a certain disease, it could be anything. And it could be based on a drug response, it could be their age, it could be their particular BMI, uh, it could be their entire population. And uh, so, uh, Aggregate that generates summary statistics of the genomic variation across that cohort that you selected, and then annotate it. Assign meaning to each of the variants by joining on known information about each variant. <coughs> so, I'm going to go quickly. Uh, so, I'm going to do a demo, but um, I'm going to skip some of the steps uh, because it takes time. Um, quickly jump into, so I'm not going to install, so I pre-installed um, Adam last night um, to run this Spark. I did all these steps. At the end of it, I'm going to point you guys to a, a blog where all the code is available if you want to try it out. Um, install Adam, uh, and then mm -hmm. I would run uh, the command uh, which is available, uh, convert the VCF file uh, to uh, Park A. So I quickly go back. Uh, so what, what we're going to do in today's demo, we're going to focus on a particular chromosome, chromosome 22, uh, for all 2,504 samples in the 1,000 Genome Project, a data set. Uh, you can scale the data size of the cluster depending whether you're looking at just chromosome 22 or entire uh, genome. So for my case, I just did spin up a two-node cluster uh, to do the work, but if you're going to look at beyond chromosome 22, all the chromosomes, for example, you probably need a larger cluster. 
Um, and then finally, um, reduce your parquet file to only the fields you need. So I don't need every field in that. Um, and that's the command to do that. Um, and then I'm going to use the reference data. Reference data is very important. Um, and, uh, and then compare with the 2,500 odd um, uh, data set that I have. So I'm going to use a publicly available uh, data set uh, that's available called the CleanBot data set. Um, and then this is the few steps to copy the data set uh, to S3. Um, and now we're going to launch uh, Amazon Athena uh, to run the query. So it's very important to see the power of Athena and why am I suggesting Athena, right? So at this point of time, you have to spend very little money because you actually bought a data set that was publicly available. So you're in S3, and now you're going to use Athena, you don't have to spin up a cluster. You do not, you do, you know, you're not using uh, anything complicated. It, it, as I will show you, it will just throw you a web interface where you can start writing queries on the raw data that you processed. So why Athena? Because uh, you can start querying instantly, serverless, no ETL, schema on read, very important. So you're not spending hours and days for push data to a data warehouse which conforms to a particular schema. You're putting schema on read, you're not defining schema on write, so you're, not, you're saving a lot of time and energy doing that. You pay per query, only pay for data scan. Right? You're not spinning up infrastructure. It's a managed service. So it just gives you a problem. You, if you're not using it, you're not paying for anything. You pay only when you start querying the data. Um, it's open, powerful, standard, build on Presto, run standard SQL. So again, very important, it's run standard SQL. You're not learning any new tricks. You're not learning a new language. For a new analysis, you need to know SQL. Um, it's really fast, uh, interactive performance, given a large data set. Uh, I don't know how much time you get. You, know, you can query like billions of rows of data in less than 10 seconds uh, using this. And the more, most interesting, you see, the data is not on the server. The data is separate. Sitting on S3, you're throwing compute at it, which is, which is very powerful. So how do you how do you report in your data? I guess someone has to report in data. I was talking to uh, some uh, professors at UCL that work with the, the degenerative the diseases for children in particular. So I have like a, a, quite a big uh, data data bank uh, and they obviously have to report it in. There. <coughs> and I'm thinking uh, the same thing has happened with the genome. The genome in itself is not very interesting. When you find uh, anomalies, that's very interesting. You can create uh, medicine from that. Yeah. So, but uh, if it's going to develop, people have to somehow uh, uh, put in more data into it. So I just wonder how that works. Is that is it like uh, uh, working the same thing as they do? They report into the data bank and then uh, 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 yes, it? there is a process. The Open Data Project and AWS. There is a page dedicated to it. Talks to how you can participate to it. So. We have people from all verticals, you know, chemical engineering data sets, engineering data set. Um, so it's a good, good, good point you mentioned. So uh, the, once you analyze the data, um, and you know when genes are replicating that DNA, uh, RNA, etc., uh, most of the time they're accurate. Sometimes there is an error, and those errors are responsible to certain diseases or anomalies. Often, and also interestingly, those same errors are also important for our evolution. That drives the species forward, right? Um, so when you're doing this analysis and you're finding results, what happens? The Athena stores the results on S3 as well. So you can make that data set publicly available. Or through S3, you can give it to a particular account. So you can, you can have always restrict access within a community, or you can make it public. Um, so this is again I did last night rather than um, going to do it now. So create a database table, standard SQL syntax, create a database on Athena, create a database, uh, and then create a table. So note, there's a note over there, create external table, which is saying that the data external to the system. So external, to, and you see the location over here, I'm saying S3. 
So everything else stand is standard, is standard hive QL, and I'm pointing it to a data set that I have um, on my S3. And, and I'm also saying stored as parquet, so I'm suggesting that the location uh, is data is stored as parquet. So that's my first table I create. Then I want to create another table, which is the reference data that I downloaded from Plimbo, so that I can compare my data set with the reference data. So again, same syntax. But interesting, what I wanted to point over here, you see, that was a parquet file sitting on S3. This, in this one, this is a text tab separated file stored in a location on S3. That shows you the agility of Athena to be able to work with various data formats with the same interface. And what we're going to do in next set, we're going to combine those two tables, right? So think about it. So you have quite a lot of data sitting in a format called parquet. We didn't care about, we didn't worry about how we're storing the data and what format we're storing the data. We threw a definition to the data on read rather than forcing the data to a particular definition. We let the data in. And then we, we assigning on read. So that saves a lot of time. And then a completely different data format, we create a similar table structure, um, um, and now we're going to join them together. So, the first query I'm going to do is uh, applying the select, aggregate, and annotate paradigm. So we're going to try and find, find something called population drug response. What small molecules or drugs are most likely to affect a subpopulation of individuals based on their genetic information? In this query that I'm going to run now, uh, assume that uh, you have some phenotype about your population. In this case, also assume that all the samples uh, sharing the pattern NA12 are part of a specific demographic. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to do something called a predicate pushdown. We're going to filter the samples, aggregate, join it with the uh, reference data, filter it out and order it. Let's try and see if the demo works, right? So. Um, so, I, I stored the data in a bucket called Biden US is to one, just to show you uh, how the data looks like. So, that's the CleanVar data, which is simply a text gzip file. And if I go back to the previous folder, and the 1000 genomes data is stored uh, after filtering as as a parquet format uh, here, the dot parquet files. So that's my um, data set that we're gonna play with now. Uh, I'm going to now quickly run a service called Amazon Athena. Right, so, um, I'm gonna switch onto the scheme, I called it KG for a reason I can't remember. Um, so let's look at how big our data set is. Um, live demo is already fun. So yeah, that's uh, about 152,787,000 um, um, yeah, rows approximately, and it took about less than five seconds. So that shows you um, and the power straight away. Um, I'm gonna quickly, for, uh, for argument's sake, I'm gonna jump into it, uh, just to show the power of Athena, I'm gonna jump into another data set I wanted to show you guys, default. Uh, so this is, this is another uh, openly available data uh, made available by New York Taxi Service, um, um, NYC Taxi Trips, and it's got over a billion rows of data. And I'm gonna do a group buy. So I want you to think about you doing it with your existing data warehouse, a group buy, over a billion rows of data, uh, and the data is not even in the data warehouse, it's, it's somewhere in, in, in a uh, different storage. So if I run that, let's see how long it takes. All right, so 6.3 seconds, um, over a billion rows of data, uh, and I did a group buy and uh, sum at the same time. No, that, it, it's all on S3. Compute is on Athena, yeah. and it, data is nowhere near the compute is on S3. 
so that, that, is, that is powerful. And just to, just to show that I was not lying, look at the data. I'm going to do a quick counter. Um, so now you can see how, why this becomes so powerful for someone doing genomics analysis, right? 2.5 billion genes each, uh, uh, sequences each. Uh, world population, I don't know, top of my head, over 8 billion. Um, and then if we add the other species as well and do comparison, this is a data set, unless it's cheap, uh, inexpensive to run, store the data and to execute, I experiments wouldn't, wouldn't happen, right? So yeah, that's about 1.2 billion rows of data um, straight away. Okay, let's quickly go back to our uh, uh, reason for today uh, is the data set. So I wrote the queries so that I don't do typos. Uh, so this is my fast query that I wanted to run on Athena. All right. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, it's my best practice just so that I know what I'm running. When I have quite a few queries in there, yeah, whatever you the cursor pose position is, it'll run that particular line. Yes. That particular role, yeah. Is there any type of desktop application when you create? Good question. So we make uh, Athena available through an API. So, and it's a JDBC connector. So you can have your existing desktop uh, application that connects to it, uses a JDBC connector to connect to Athena. Um, could be a standard standard one. So that, that so you know, that, that took about uh, 7.16. Uh, it's a reasonably complex query. If, let's uh, have a quick look at the query itself. Um, you know, so again, we decided we're going to look at any uh, 12 sequence. And uh, yeah, so that ran very fast, I think. So quickly going back to the presentation. So. What, what did that show us? Um, right, so that query, uh, when you inspect, what we could clearly see is we found uh, a high frequency of variance associated with the metabolism of, I can't pronounce it, sorry, Debrisoquine, right? So based on the data set I ran, I found uh, a high frequency of variance associated with it. So let's go back and look at the results again. Apologies to uh, change screens. So, if you can see it, all right. Um, yeah, so poor metabolism of that. that can everyone see it? Uh, so, let me just expand it a little bit. All right, okay. Um, so, right. Um, now, what we're going to next as a next step, what we want to see is uh, we're going to do some quality control. Look at um, okay, well, we found we found a variant, and now let's see is that a false positive or not. Um, and uh, yeah, in this query, the entire population is needed. We're not that particular one, so we're going to run another set of query uh, on Athena again. So where is my car? So I'm going to choose this query. It looks reasonably similar, but it uses the entire data set. And now, so just to go back to Athena again, um, I'm going to use a new query. So you can open a new window and run the query uh, that way. All right. Um, and hopefully it's going to come back and show us Something interesting. Right. So what do we see? Uh, we see what we noticed before is coming both as a pathogenic and also as a B9. Uh, so there, there is, which shows, which shows you is a data quality aspect of that we need to revise the data. And next time you're going to run the query, you're going to eliminate uh, that particular data set So, right, with that in mind, what, 
Yeah, so that, that's the quality control. Um, from, from the results, the highest frequency results have uh, conflicting information being listed both as potentially disease-causing and benign in genomics variants with a high frequency and less likely to cause a disease. Um, your quick analysis allows you to discount the pathogenic clinical significance annotation of these high genotype frequency variants, um, right? So what I hopefully was able to demonstrate to you guys is uh, very quickly and very inexpensively you ran queries on a large, a massively large data sets. And I want to quickly go through is how other customers do that now. So first of all, if you've got a phone, you has a QR image um, of whatever we did uh, is now available, the source code and everything is available in this blog, uh, which um, Aaron is also a solutions architect, but he's a doctor, he's got a PhD, he knows more about the topic than I do. <laughs> and, uh, he, uh, he's written this blog, um, I really like it, and I wanted to share with you guys. And uh, the URL is also available that if you don't want to take the cure image. Um, I also wanted to point to you guys, sorry, you, you want to take that? You got it. Um, so I want to talk, talk to you about our reInvent this year in December. Um, we had um, PECAG uh, talk about a project they did. Um, and that is available as a YouTube video, um, very powerful, um, and it talks about how, in a, how inexpensive it was to run an experiment which normally uh, would take many years. I think initially it took um, a good few years to even think about how they could do it uh, on AWS. So they used, um, if I remember, um, yeah, 5,800 whole, whole genome uh, from 2,800 cancer donors um, and did uh, RNA sequence of data. The data grew from 300 terabytes to 900 terabytes. And they used 14 cloud and HPC environments. And, if, and at some point, they were running 15,000 cores to do the uh, analysis. And they found AWS um, extremely useful and often more flexible than the open uh, stack platforms. They also were running experiments in parallel. Um, and yeah, uh, have a look at uh, uh, that video. It's a good, uh, it's worth listening to it. Um, then I wanted to also highlight to you with, uh, we had another blog, uh, very useful. So this is for data. Um, uh, again, so using EMR rather than Athena, I demonstrate Athena, so again, We've got, we've got a whole array of tools. You, you have to choose the right ones that you need uh, for that particular exam, uh, experiment. Um, so th this, this particular project um, talks about, uh, when it took about 13 years and several billions of dollars um, to do a particular project that was done under 3,000 3, US dollars today uh, in the cloud. Um, so, yeah, so that's very useful. And again, there's a link to it um, for you to listen in. And they use Amazon Redshift um, along with uh, EMR uh, for this particular experiment. Um, and then I wanted those, uh, R is again a very popular tool for data scientists. Um, so, uh, what's it, bioinformatics? Yeah, uh, so bi Bioconductor, there is an R library, uh, R package dedicated to run um, uh, our experimentation and genomics data set uh, that you can run along with uh, Amazon Redshift. Uh, again, that's, uh, that's a blog um, that uh, Chris wrote, and that's available if you want to take a QR image of it and try it out yourself. Um, it's uh, very powerful. Um, yeah, some more homework <laughs> if you're interested. Uh, so we recently published a blog, say, Create a Healthcare Data Hub with AWS and Merth Connect. Um, and it talks about step-by-step -step guides on how to do that. And uh, one of our uh, solutions architects also recently wrote a blog about readmission predictions. And so, you know, readmissions costs uh, every government a huge amount of money and how to do some predictions using that. And that's also available uh, on our website, on our blog. Um, and finally, I want to go through um, uh, another uh, recent blog that uh, one of our solutions architect, Ben, wrote recently. 
Um, so again, in this particular one, if I quickly go back, in this particular one, um, he had uh, connected devices uh, such as heart rate monitor, and he used Amazon IoT, pushed the data through Amazon Kinesis, stored in S3, and used Athena, uh, like I did in this particular demo. Um, and then, uh, once the analysis was done in Athena, he used Amazon QuickSight for BI visualization of exactly what he was looking at. And if you want to have a look at it, it's also available on our blog, and you can try it out um, very, very easily. Is that, is the, is, does QuickSight connect to the raw data, or is it connecting to QuickSight queries from Athena? Is QuickSight is connecting to Athena. So it's connected to Athena, and Athena does the queries to your raw data? Yes, exactly. Yeah, because Athena uh, also we also uh, you know give you the SDK and the JDBC driver for Athena. So yeah, that, that's just average heart rate by user ID over a date time, uh, which he uh, plotted on uh, QuickSight. Uh, oops, sorry, sorry, this direction. Uh, well, that that's uh, what I wanted to show you. So uh, how easily solve possible questions. So I have a degree in biophysics, so this is all quite interesting to me. I'm just wondering if there's been any advances in artificial intelligence, deep learning, applied to these genomic data sets, because I'm a programmer and I wouldn't have a clue where to <laughs> create algorithms to, to draw patterns from these genomic, basically random strings. Absolutely. So you know, you know Kaggle? As a data scientist, you probably know Kaggle is like a data science community. They are actually running a, a competition at the moment. Um, on trying to find uh, cancer-related genes uh, using a data science project. So there's a competition, feel free to join in. Um, and uh, yeah, there are lots of libraries, deep learning libraries like MXNet um, uh, you can use. Uh, for example, let's, let's look at uh, image recognition, right? So if you can't have a scan of uh, the biopsy data, of various cells. Let, let's look at uh, something like a lung, lung cancer cell. And if you analyze it with um, uh, deep learning, uh, image recognition, and find a pattern, the machine develops a pattern. So yeah, you can utilize that uh, in terms of detecting lung cancer early, right? So the answer to your question is yes. Uh, there is a huge amount of research, especially on deep learning, uh, that's currently ongoing in terms of uh, solving these particular challenges for society.